Vault System, a secure system designed by your friends at vault -Tec to preserve our Western way of life. Those fine men at vault -Tec have managed to preserve all the comforts of home while keeping you safe from harmful fallout radiation. But what home would be complete without access to high quality news and entertainment? That's right, the homes of traitors. And you're not a traitor, are you, Vault Dweller? In order to ensure the sound of freedom, Vault Tech created the radio vaults, just like... Oh, oh, it's on. West Vault Radio. These vaults are transmitting 24 hours a day, providing you of news, entertainment, and more. Each station has its own unique sound, so you can enjoy endless variety. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of Vault Tech. And hopefully that answers any of our listeners' questions over how WVR came into being. I, for one, am thrilled that our generous station owners at vault -Tec decided to staff this station solely with British expats and people who could do a convincing accent. But now let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. It's time for Talk Vault. Don't just talk. Talk Vault. Today, listeners, I like to talk about gardening. I know many of you out there, like me, are keen horticulturalists and enjoy nothing more than adding some colour to our vaults or that humble patch of heavily irradiated wasteland. But one question I often find myself being asked is, Susan, when is the right time of year to plant my perennials? Well, that query should no longer be of concern, thanks to our latest innovation from our friends at Oak Ridge Atom Industries. According to this vague yet oddly charming pamphlet I found in the gardening section of our library, Oak Ridge Atom Industries are the premier, and only, provider of atomic energised seeds. What are atomic energised seeds? To put it simply, as does the pamphlet in front of me, they are regular seeds that have been carefully treated with gamma rays. To be specific, those refined from the isotope Cobalt 6-0. Now, as we are living in the aftermath of a nuclear apocalypse, I don't need to tell you that gamma rays will pass harmlessly through the delicate embryo in each seed, nurture the growing ovule inside, and cause a whole variety of changes which will affect the plant when mature. You can enjoy experimenting with both radiation and gardening techniques in the comfort of your own vault tech vault. Other dwellings are available. You can plant these randomly irradiated seeds and see what ripe, tasty crimes against nature they can produce. Isn't that wonderful? I don't have any of these atomic energy seeds myself, just the pamphlet, but maybe if you listeners have a dig around the storage sections of your vaults, or maybe visit the burnt out remains of a gardening centre if you happen to live topside you could get your hands on a few packets of these seeds and tell me what happens. Give me a call on frequency 4625 kHz and let me know if you've grown any of these atomic energised seeds. If you haven't, why not let me know your opinion on them? Have we taken science too far? Is this a great way to teach children about the wonders of atomic energy? Or is this just a frivolous use of our already overstretched water and soil supplies? Let me know. And while you get your hands green, I'm going to play you some classic musical tunes to give you that extra spring in your step and make your day just that little bit brighter. It's time for Variety from the Vault. For variety that doesn't fall, just listen, just listen to the vault. <laughs> It was Sunday morning and the preacher gave his warning Said you better get down and pray You better listen to me mister And you listen sister We get close to that great day You better listen to the teaching Of the good book I'm preaching Said men would fly like birds But brother do you hear me These things scare me I don't know how to put it in words You better stop them scientists from researching Cause they done gone too far they got these boys flying faster than sound and the whole world's in a war. Man, that atomic energy show scares me, cause if it will do what they claim. 
You better start thinking about saving your soul. Ah, uh, Sam Johnson ain't my name. <laughs> Is bad, but that A bomb is worse. And they done named that H bomb well. Thousand times stronger than that A bomb is, and it's gonna blow us all to kingdom come. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just stating facts. They said that Bill Man made stars. But that's a job I'm gonna leave to the Lord, and I ain't got no business on Mars. You better stop them scientists from researching, cause they done gone too far. They got these boys flying faster than sound. They got the whole world in a war. Man, that atomic energy, it so scares me. Cause if it will do what they claim, you better start thinking about saving your soul. Ah, uh, Sam Johnson ain't my name. Now I'm thankful for the drugs that kills the bugs, the mosquitoes, and the mice, and the fleas. Instead of us trying to get up to Mars, we better get down on our knees. And thank the good Lord for the world we have. And in closing, I got this to say. If God intended we should go to Mars, why'd he put it so far away? You better stop them scientists from researching, cause they done gone too far. They got these boys flying faster than sound. They got the whole world in a war. Man, that atomic energy so scares me, cause if it will do what they claim. You better start thinking about saving your soul. Ah, uh, Sam Johnson ain't my name. You think I'm kidding? Sam Johnson ain't my name. Welcome back, listeners. That was Billy Hughes and his buckaroos with Atomic Sermon. Unfortunately, there has been an interruption with our regularly scheduled programming due to a rat roach infestation in our studios. Don't worry, Mr. Wigglesworth, my number one robot employee, has taken it upon himself to rid us of this slight problem. Isn't that right, Mr. Wigglesworth? He's a keeper, that one. Anyway, as I'm no longer allowed to use the studio, albeit temporarily, I thought I'd take you on a bit of a tour of our wonderful facilities that we have here at Vault 97. So, in order to get us going, I thought I'd go down to one of the rooms I use the most, which is the, um, the kitchen. So here we are in, um, Vault 97's kitchen. In a feature, um, new to this station that, uh, I'd like to call, remember to record the jingle, I have to tell you, as with everything that our wonderful sponsors here at Vault Tech have provided us, everything here is state of the art. We have a dish dryer thing, and um, it says dehumidifier. Not really sure what that's for, but I'm sure it makes fantastic dishes. Anyway, I don't really know what actually anything else in here does, but I'm going to talk to you about the toaster. The toaster we have here in Vault 97 is, it, it, it's quite frankly fantastic. It, um, you put bread in, and you press a button, and then you get toast. It, it's wonderful. I'm not entirely sure if any of you Wasteland people have any of this stuff, but um, if you don't, I highly recommend you purchase, or um, scavenge, or whatever it is you're doing out there in the post-nuclear wasteland, look for a toaster. Definitely top tip. There you go. That's a Susan tip. Toasters are the way to civilization. Anyway, uh, what else do we have in the kitchen? Oh, yeah, if I go through this door, yes, this is the uh, hydroponics bay. This makes um, enough plants for 400 people. Not really sure why there's so much food as it is uh, just me, but the robots still keep making it. So I guess that's, um, that's lovely. That, that's really nice of them. So um, we've got 400 plants that make lots of wheat. Makes a lot of bread. I have to say most of it goes to waste. I'm guessing probably most of you in the wasteland are starving and killing each other for food, so that's probably not the best use of resources we've got going on. 
<laughs> Good job none of you know our location, otherwise I'd uh, expect a few visits. What else do we have? Oh, oh, here's our storerooms. This is where we have a thousand years worth of um, synthy cow. You remember synthy cow, don't you, listeners? It was an artificial beef substitute. Had that uh, that jingle. It was uh, synthy cow. You'd be mad not to. I have a lot of that. That and wheat. My diet's very no, it's it's not varied. But um, I, I'm alive, so I suppose that's um, all we can say. That, that's that's oh 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 oh. Oh, there's a dead rad roach over there. Yes, I have dead rad roaches. Sometimes I eat their um their meat. That that kind of I like eating rad roach meat because it makes me feel like I'm I'm one of you in the wasteland. Because I imagine there's a lot of these rad roaches out there, and uh, being that you don't have state of the art hydroponics or a thousand years worth of synthy beef or synthy cow, uh, yes, you you probably eat a lot of this. So when I eat rad roach for a bit of a bit of a mix up, as I like to think of it. I feel like I'm one of you, one of you are my listeners, so um, yeah, just just don't think you're suffering alone, listeners. I, I suffer too. Oh, standing here makes me, uh, reminds me when I was younger, because obviously this uh, Vault 97, we've been going nearly 200 years now, but when I was a child we had um, Mr Oliver, and he, he had a cooking show, and uh, he, he was brilliant when I was young, he would make souffles and um, coco van, I don't really know what that was, but it sounded rude, so I suppose we all liked it. He he went a bit funny towards the end, though, and he started talking about how he would only ever cook with the other, other white meat. Don't really know what that was. A lot of our maintenance staff went missing at that time, though, so maybe... Anyway! Yes, oh well. Maybe one day I'll um, I'll dig out one of his shows for you all out there, and you can listen to the uh, the the culinary genius of uh, Mr. Oliver. I think that would be lovely, wouldn't you? Yes. Anyway, um, what else have we got? Oh, oh, the freezer section of our uh, of our Waltz kitchens. I haven't actually honestly looked in here for years. This is where we stored a lot of, um, well, our cryo facilities aren't very good here in Vault 97, so um, there was a point when the overseer thought it'd be a good idea to store people who are sick in the freezers. And maybe one day, when uh, our medical facilities got up and running again, we could uh, revive them. I'm not entirely sure there's a cure for bullet in the brain, but uh, one can but hope, eh? Anyway, it seems like Mr. Wigglesworth is, uh, according to my pit boy, saying the rad roaches are gone now, so uh, I'm going to be heading back to the studio. However, whilst I do that, I'm going to play a few more songs for you, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I'm guessing about food. So, Mr. Wigglesworth says he's set them up, and, uh, I trust him, implicitly. He, he's a good robot. Um, anyway, I'll be back in five minutes whilst I, uh, make my way back to the studio. Take care. <laughs> Down beneath the deep blue sea, where one day I chanced to be, the mermaids gave a very swell affair. I looked out from my submarine at the queerest ball I'd ever seen. Not a soul on earth I knew was there. Of course they did the tango and no one made a slip. Of all the guests assembled there, each one could do the dip at the mermaid's fancy ball in Father Neptune's hall. The little eels were pickled and they did a naughty wiggle. Although it shocked a few old crabs, it made the bluefish giggle at the mermaid's fancy ball. They had no bar at all. No, 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 we've talked about this, not this song. Mr. Wigglesworth, what on earth do you think you're doing? How many times have I told you about this song? I don't care. Don't take that tone with me. I can have you run down for scrap metal at any time. Do you think my listeners really care what you like? No. 
my listeners do not care for songs about mermaids. And for the last time, I have told you every time we play this song, it sends the robots that are working in the water treatment department into shutdown mode. (coughs) And now it's time for my mandatory downtime. You're very, very lucky, Mr. Wigglesworth. However, if you think I'm leaving you in charge whilst I go to sleep, you have another thing coming. I'm going to send for Mr. Mills. In the meantime, I'm going to have to leave this playlist running. (sighs) Let's go. On the body, there's a whistling boy. Bright and gay, he fills the world with joy. Always whistling to while the time away From the early morning to the close of day Always whistling to while the time away From the early morning to the close of day Always whistling to while the time away From the early morning to the close of day Always whistling to the close of day Listening to Vault 97, broadcast number one. Fallout, Vault Tech, and all associated terms are property of Bethesda. This is a parody and a non profit endeavor. We just really like the game. Music sourced from the Free Music Archive and Archive.org. Atomic Sermon by Billy Hughes and his Buckaroos. Mermaid's Fancy Ball by Billy Murray. And The Whistling Barry Boy by Frank Kernel. Sound effects sourced from Free Sound.org from users Transit King, Ludwig, D-Land, James W. Rose, River Nile 7, Hey I'm 89 Years Old, Ashley Double X Piano, People Circus, Ryan's Nook, and j Words and acting by Laura Manuel, Jingles Sound Design, and Logo Design by Luke Hyatt. Please contact Susan at Westford Radio on Twitter. <laughs>